So when the boss has to do something, generally you should do it. That's just some career advice. So what she wanted me to talk about was social media and the job search. Is there a dry erase marker in here? Here we go. In case I need it. So I don't know what's been told to you about social media, uh, your social media use and the job search, but typically uh, people make it out to be bigger than it is. All right? So you don't need a, a complete freak out about it. Go and knock down all your social media platforms and everything. But anyway, we'll just talk about it, and uh, I'll just pass it along. For those of you I don't know, about one of you, I guess, my name's David Williams, marketing professor. Social media is my research, my primary research area. All right? So... <clears throat> Who cares? Why should you care? About a year ago, I was asked to speak to the Northwest Georgia uh, chapter of SHRM. Anybody know what SHRM stands for? Any management majors in here? Thank you. That's right. Everybody hearing? Society of Human Resource Managers. So that's what the human resource managers are members of professionally. So they have monthly meetings and whatnot, and they eat lunch. Anyway, so I went. Uh, they asked me to come talk to them about using social media to recruit uh, employees because that's, you know, HR function is recruiting employees. So I went to show them some tools, things I do. But the first thing I did was, after it was over with, not the first thing, at the end I said, how many people, how many of you guys search applicants' social media profiles or their Internet what you can find about them on the internet during the job search. So every hand went up. So they all do. So that's why you should care. That's the main reason, because they're looking around. All right? So you see, uh, is this a pointer? Uh, maybe. Is that it? Oh, look at there. Ooh, chase it. So... Almost half said they use social media or online search engines to screen job candidates. This is from a SHRM survey of their members. That's the reason I'm, I'm using it, because I saw it firsthand at the local chapter. And these were people that represented the big manufacturers around here, Shaw and Bowie and um, Mohawk. And these are all big, most of them big carpet outfits, but they're big human resource people. So they're looking, and a third have disqualified a job candidate in the past year because of concerning information. Illegal activity, of course, what's legal in one place might not be legal in another place. Say no more. Or discrepancy with an application. What do you think that means? That's right. Or lying on your resume. How many people have lied on their resume? I would like the video to record only one hand went up and it went in jest. Right. So you don't want to do that. But they can use social media as an easy place to find it because people really say what they do on social media. And then you can cross-check that with a resume and go, that guy said he was working at this place during this period of time. And here's pictures of him in Colorado for those three years. Right? So they don't have to ask you. They could just they can just bump you out. So, uh Acrobat was successfully updated. All right, we're going to ask about this right here is cut off, but I'm going to come back to it. Allow candidates to explain. All right, so every time you go on the Internet or on social media, you leave footprints. Or in marketing research, we call that sometimes social exhaust. As you move around, you know, it could be putting a rating on um, an Amazon, something on Amazon that you bought. All right, you're leaving, you're leaving some exhaust. Uh, on Pinterest, if you're using Pinterest, which is maybe you're not, maybe you are, uh, you know, whatever you subscribe, what boards, what pins you like or you subscribe to. Anytime you're on a computer, all day, every day, uh, you're leaving footprints all around. So it's pretty easy for somebody who knows what they're looking for to put together a profile of you even if they have no idea anything about you, okay? Now, luckily, most of the people, if you're applying for a job, they're not going to be that savvy, all right? 
but don't count on it. Maybe one or two are. But this is just an example of a, of a girl, they're calling Jen, the, the, different, the different things that she has done on the Internet today and where she's left footprints. So be mindful, right, of what you like on Facebook, what feeds you subscribe to, what RSS feeds you subscribe to. Even if you're not a, uh, well, I don't even want to say it because it'll be on video. But anyway, just pay attention to what you, what you like because people will draw an inference about you based on the footprints that you leave. So where are they looking? Where are HR people looking? LinkedIn and Facebook and Twitter. We'll concentrate. Why should we not even worry about this? Very good, aren't we up to date with current events? It was so popular and great that Google shut it down. How many people had a Google Plus profile in here? Oh, I did. Yeah, and I never did anything past that. That may have been how I ended up with it. There was a good reason to, to do it, which was to get into Google search algorithm, but that's not the point of why I'm here today. That'll be next semester if anybody's taking marketing 4433. Okay, we'll talk about how to increase your search. Uh, right, so LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, are professional or association social networking sites. That's typically, any accountants in here? Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding. No, y'all really, y'all are good. Uh, Debit's on the left, and, and I'm tapped out. Okay, uh, that would be, you know, if you're an accountant, you'd be a member of a professional organization where you have to get continuing education hours and all that. But I, don't, I would say what I'm, what I'm, my point I'm making here today is concentrate on these two. Now, LinkedIn, I'm going to talk about that in just a minute. I'm sure in this class, I think Dr. Helms or whoever makes everybody have a LinkedIn, okay? So you, you want to keep your LinkedIn as boring as possible, meaning keep your funny business off of LinkedIn, like it's strictly professional so that, you know, a priest or a nun or your grandmother or a four-year-old child could look at it. None of them would be offended. They would only get information about you, right? And then Facebook, Facebook is number two because older people have moved on to Facebook. Most uh, people in their 20s have moved away from Facebook. As soon as your parents and grandparents get onto Facebook, the younger generation, they left Facebook. But who are the HR departments populated by? What we call digital immigrants, whereas you're digital natives. Uh, and Facebook, is they, that's, they think that's the hottest social media going. Right? They couldn't understand. They don't understand how to use Snapchat still. And they probably won't. So, so, but that's where they're looking. This report from HR professionals, that's where they're looking. So, if we know that that's where they're looking, you want to keep all that straight. That my point, that's the point for that slide. What happened? Oh, I did that. Okay, good. Wait. There we go. And there we go. So what are they looking for? I drew a couple of arrows there to make it easy to see a couple of the two things I want you to notice. They're looking for information that they can get that's generally not going to be on your resume or your curriculum vita. All right, they're looking to put a little, some more meat on the bone because you're giving them the basics. And also, job candidates include their social networking website on their resume. I'm sure each of you have your LinkedIn handle on your resume, right? Is that yes or no? Or you don't? Okay, well you should. Uh, if you're going to have me, what other person, what other point is there to have LinkedIn? Nobody's looking at it. <laughs> it's a repository for you to put stuff, basically. I mean, it's not, a, it is a social media platform, but it's not a lot of fun. But Very few people while away the hours sitting there in my class monkey around on social media. It's not LinkedIn that they're on. Right? Uh, and I know nobody does that during any of my classes. And I don't believe that either. So one quarter look at social media profiles before the interview 
three out of ten wait until after the interview. What do we? What? Why does that make a difference? What does that tell us? That's right. Most of them, it looks like they'll wait till the interview and they go, "Yeah, he's pretty decent." I think we'll go on one step further with him. Then they go plowing around, looking for information on you. Okay, so that's important to know. So again, it's not time for a full-on freakout. Before you, before you start sending out resumes or submitting for job applications, you need to police everything up. If you didn't get around to it, that's pretty good. They're not really looking at it before you. You're not some hot shot executive from the San Francisco Giants. They're going to research before you know, you're coming to apply to take over the Atlanta Braves, all right? Somebody in here may be, but I don't think anybody in here is probably ever going to win a Nobel Prize. I mean, let's just stay real. So, but after the interview, then you really should make sure, and I'm going to give you a tip on how to point them where you want them to look, and then you don't have to worry about it so much. Uh, explaining. You'll notice that this is 2011, that the dark red, and 2015, right? Allow candidates to explain concerning information. In 2011, no, under any circumstances. Two-thirds, I mean, three-fourths said no. You see that's now a little bit better because it's just more accepted that everybody's going to have a social media profile and going to have social media platforms and we use them, and people just aren't whipped out of, you know. Granny might still be upset about some things on Facebook, <laughs> but most people aren't that worked up about it anymore. However, you know, after the decision to hire, 14% will say, yeah, why don't you explain this? In the middle, after screening but prior to the decision to hire, 39% in 2015. So even if there was something concerning on a social media platform of yours, that they could, line, they could link back to you, it seems like a lot of places would say, hey, just explain this. Why are you wearing this uh, Italian flag, fascist flag hat? I don't know what your excuse for that would be, but you'd get an opportunity to give one. Typically, you want to stay away from all fascism or Nazism. Is that news to y'all? They're not good. <laughs> Very good. Okay. So what should you do? If you don't use it, enjoy it, or get value from it, deactivate it. Google, Google's taking care of Google Plus for you. They shut that down. But if you had a Google Plus, you say, I remember having that. Go back there and deactivate it. If you have a platform you don't use, you don't regularly update it, you don't get any value from it, you haven't gone to look at it in a month or two, just deactivate it. Don't, you don't, that way you don't even have to look back and see what in the world's even on there. Why did I have that? What was I doing? Or if you have multiple accounts on Instagram, but you don't use that other one anymore because it has your girlfriend's name in the title and y'all broke up, just go ahead and deactivate that one. I made that up, but I see some of y'all look kind of suspect. If you keep it, clean it up. All right? You want... A, your four-year-old child and your mother and grandmother to be able to look at it and nobody really cares about anything that's on there. That's what I mean by police it up. I don't mean any four-year-old child. I mean your own. That's the mindset. An attorney told me that one time. <laughs> it makes a difference between any four-year-old child and your own four-year-old child or what you care that they hear or see, you know, that you did. So clean it up. And if you can't, Lock it down, all right? If it's public, make it private. That still not doesn't fix everything, does it? <clears throat> no. A few weeks ago, I noticed a girl that I went to college with that I haven't stayed, kept up with, but I noticed on Facebook people were writing these condolence messages on her uh, Facebook page, and they were mentioning one of her children who I knew had graduated from Alabama. He was an engineer. He moved down to Mobile, and I thought he was doing fine or whatever. I didn't know him. But I did know a, a good friend of mine married this girl's sister. So I just texted him because this would have been his nephew. I texted him. I said, what is, uh, what's all this? I'm, you know, that I noticed on Facebook. But, so he tells me it was something, you know, gruesome. 
So I said, hmm, I wonder what caused, I wonder what brought that up. So my brother still lives in Mobile. So I called him up. I gave him his name. And uh, he said, I don't know. I haven't heard about that. I haven't read about it in the paper, seen on television. But he looked on a Facebook page and saw, and his, of course, his daughter and he are linked, and saw that this guy was a friend of his daughter's via Facebook. So he just backed into it, and we got all the information on the kid we needed. Neither one of us were connected to him, but his daughter was. So the thing is, even if you lock down a platform, I can get at it. I can get at it. Maybe everybody can't get at it, but I can get at it. You know, if my daughter's dating somebody, I can get at his stuff. No matter how hard they try. Okay? But most people aren't going to work that hard. But if they want to, they can. So if, by making it private, there's still back channel ways to go and look at your stuff. So don't think you can put any sort of nonsense on there and make it private. Because all they'll do, you know, the HR person has a daughter who knows a girl who's friends with a person. That's friends, that's friends that follows your Instagram account, and that's it. Snapchat's very safe, though, correct? No. What does it take? How do you get in trouble with Snapchat? You send somebody a snap, they screenshot it, that's it. Oh, they say, oh, but the snaps, that I have them set to disappear. You know, they only last a few seconds. Yeah, that's all it takes. Just two, and you all know what I'm talking about. So, you know. Just be smart. Don't be stupid. And those are good that's a good tip for life. Uh, keep LinkedIn professional, boring, and distribute that link for sure. Okay? So put that link on your resume and make sure. It's easy to make sure that that one is straight. Maybe they look at that, they find all they want to know, and they don't move any further. They don't go looking around for you. They probably will look a little bit more, but not for So. Remember, it may very well be a digital immigrant assessing you. Therefore, send them where you want to go, okay? A digital native, that concept between digital native and digital immigrants are, digital natives have always had access to the internet, a computer, and social media. That would be most of you. Me, I'm a digital immigrant. I remember when they got computers, I was a junior in college, undergraduate, when they got computers in the business school for word processing and such that involved the Internet. So the concept is that if you natively learn a language, it's natural to you, okay? So if you speak Spanish because you grew up in Spain, you're fluent in Spanish, and then I learn Spanish, but it's not my first language. I'm never going to be as good at it as you are. All right? I'm just never I'm just never going to be at it because you have you've grown up with it. So people who are immigrants to social media and the internet are not going to be as it's not second nature to them like it would be to a digital native. Are you with me? Okay. Therefore, they might consider what you would cons what you might consider nothing it would just take a few seconds to do. A digital immigrant might go, that's going to take me five minutes to go find that. Right? So therefore, give them some places to go. They'll probably just go there and it won't work any further. For example, Dalton State College marketing.blogspot.com. That's a blog that I have for marketing majors. Where I, where I, when I become aware of jobs or internships or things going on, primarily for the marketing discipline, I put them up there. That's a Google product. What does it cost me? Nothing. It's free. Now, if you want to drop that blogspot.com off of it and just have it daltonstatecollegemarketing.com, that would cost me. I have to register the domain. All right? That's 15 bucks at GoDaddy, I think, for Google. But you can set up a blog of your own with your name and just use it to put some information up there that you want people to find and include that link, all right? So on that, you can give people information that they're not going to ask you because they either can't by law or they're just not going to. You can just provide it, okay? What you look like. 
your age, where you went to high school, when you graduated college, some more information about your college career, stuff you wouldn't put on your resume. And you can provide some other information. Include that link right below your LinkedIn. And typically, they look at LinkedIn, they'll look at that space, and that's the only thing they'll look at. And it's all stuff that you put in front of them to look at. So rather than put people on a search, just take them right to where you want them to go. And all the stuff on there is good. And it's true, and it's about you. And it puts a lot of meat on the bone. So in marketing, we're always seeking to reduce risk. If you reduce risk, people will buy more. The reason companies offer warranties is to reduce risk. So when you buy it, you go home and you say, I spent too much money on that. But you go, but I got that great warranty. I'm not going to have to pay for oil changes for four years. I still feel good about it. You know, I spent more money than I wanted to. If you provide information like what I'm talking about, it's a risk reduction for them. Above somebody else's applying, they don't have all that information on it. They have to go on a search for it. Give it to them. Give them places to go. Don't make them search around. Then they might find something crazy. Something you did one time while you were canoeing and you forgot it was still out there. You know, Whatever it is. All right, so, uh, so that. That's where we are. Now, uh, this, is a little, this is extra. You didn't pay for this. In fact, you didn't pay for any of it. Just a couple of tips I'm going to share with you. This is the top of the front page of my resume. All right? Now, does that seem okay to you? Does anybody see anything that looks odd? That seems perfectly fine to you people. is that I can go no further I will leave in shame by the way that Sedona public profile uh, that's a that's a system that we keep in the College of Business that keeps our credentials and all the things we've done and you can have a public profile so people can just click on that they can know every little thing I do that I have done with respect to uh, research service and teaching that's not on that resume, and I give them that. That way they don't have to go looking around. And right below that is some silliness. And that seems perfectly normal to you people, or we're just all being shy. So collegial, happy, puppies, giving, and brilliant. Those are all positive words. Now suppose that the job ad said, we're looking for a marketing professor But he must be collegial, happy, love puppies, giving, and brilliant. That was in their job ad. So I see those keywords, and I go, I'm putting that on my resume. Now, that looks stupid, doesn't it? Here's the thing to remember. When you're applying for jobs, a human is probably not going to be reading your resume. Maybe 10%. Basically, they're going to go into a machine, a computerized algorithm, and it's going to look for if the college degree is required and it's, and it's required in accounting, they're going to look for a key words. Do you have an undergraduate college degree? Is it in accounting? Work experience? It's going to pull all that out. And if you, if you don't have these minimum markers they're looking for, it's going to get kicked out. It's only going to keep the ones forward on the resumes that have what they're looking for, okay? Therefore, you should get those keyword concepts out of the job ad and put them in your resume. And you should do it just like that. Except, you should make the font white. They're still in there but the algorithm at monster.com is still going to see them. And mine's going to come out on top because I have everything they're looking for, including puppies. Type it all in there someplace, or you can put them throughout the document, and then make the font white. Save it as a PDF, and you always come out on top. 
the least you get a to go in there and try to talk them into hiring you after they've looked at your social media and found out they don't want to hire you. Okay? So that's tip number one. Let's work smarter, not harder. Okay? I'm going to give it to you again. The lead you'll have your puppies, same thing, just in white. There's no such thing as a short sleeve dress shirt. It's not a thing. If you have any at home, fellas, this is gonna this is general, this is for the fellas. Ladies, y'all are pretty much on it. Go home, throw them away. If you're ever somewhere and thinking about investing money with the guy, and he raises his hand like this, and you can't see a shirt sleeve, you should get up and leave. Because he's not right. Never wear a tie with a short sleeve. You look like you came just out of the wood. That would be, I have options with that dress. Those are the kind of decisions you want to have. You want to have options. Not options. Okay? It's fine what you want to look like just the face first until it's happened. This is a Okay, it's just a few no's. These guys, just this picture, just happens to have all of them in it. I'm through. Questions, comments? About anything? Disagree, agree? Everybody hungry?
Any comments from the back? I'm okay, you good? <laughs> Mature about changing the font color? You're going to love that. And you're, one day you're going to go, I bet I got in here. Well, then you're going to think well of me. And what you should do at that point is sit down and Venmo me a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> After you get the job, of course. That way I still need a job. All right, no comments, no questions? I salute you and bid you adieu.